Welcome. This is the 23rd in my series of climate mythbusters, and the myth I'm going to bust today is that global warming is just caused by natural cycles. Well, let's first go to the myth conception itself. We've heard it many, many times before. Global warming is being caused by one or some combination of natural cycles. Now, they tend to be rather vague about which cycles there are, and there's a good reason for that, as we shall see in a minute. Some of their favorites to blame are the solar cycle, Milankovitch cycles, which is the change in the Earth's orbit, which bring about the initiation of ice ages and interglacial periods, Enso cycles, which is the change between La Nina and El Nino. There are some smaller cycles similar to that, such as the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, the North Pacific Oscillation, the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, and the North Atlantic Oscillation. And of course, the cycle that we're most familiar with, which is the seasons. The first thing to remember is that global warming is a trend. It's a steady increase in the average global temperature over the last 50 to 100 years. A cycle is not a trend. If you have a complete oscillation, it does not produce a trend. I've got three different types of oscillation here, three different frequencies. And you can see over the period of this plot, they all sum to zero. So they're not producing a trend. The only way you can get a trend from an oscillation is to be observing part of that trend. The natural cycle explanation has a timing problem. If the natural cycle is too short, it will have no effect over the period of time that we've been observing. An example of this is the seasons. If the period of the natural cycle is too long, then we're not going to get a noticeable effect over a short period of time unless there's a very large amplitude change as a part of that the natural cycle. And that generally is not the case. Let's take a look at an example where the oscillation is too slow and not large enough to explain global warming. And the example I'm going to use is the transition from an ice age to an interglacial period. And we'll choose the Holocene marked with H on this plot. To go from the depth of the previous ice age to the peak of the Holocene required just seven degrees centigrade change in global temperatures. Well, how long did that take? It took about 20,000 years. So the rate of warming is 0 0.035 degrees centigrade per century. Well, how does that compare with anthropogenic global warming? That's at about one degree per century and is accelerating. So at the moment, it's 29 times faster than the uh, very precipitous rise shown on this plot. So you can't explain the current increase in global temperatures on the Milankovitch cycles or changes in the Earth's orbit. They're just plain too slow and not large enough to create a significant change over a 100 year period. We not only have a timing problem, we also have an amplitude problem. In order to explain global warming, the change in a given period must be large enough to explain the amount of heating that we're seeing and it also must be going in the right direction. And that unfortunately is not the case. Let's take total solar radiance as an example. Here's a plot of total solar radiance over the last 40 years. Total solar radiance is a measure of how much energy is coming from the sun and hitting the earth. And over that period, you can see that there's been a general decline in the amount of total solar radiance. If you compare the peaks, during solar maximum of the amount of total solar radiance hitting the Earth. You get a very similar line by comparing the minima. But what would those curves have to be like if it were to explain global warming? That's what it should look like. See, there's a huge shortfall between what we're actually observing and what is actually needed to explain global warming. So the sun uh, cannot be the source of this increased temperature. So let's do a quick assessment. Let's compare each one of the factors against the various explanations for global warming that we're presented with. First of all, the solar cycle. In the timing, it's too short. The direction at the moment, it seems to be that its energy is declining, which is the wrong direction, and the amplitude is too small. It's only 0.1%, and we need much larger amplitude than that. Changes in the Earth's orbit, Milankovitch cycles, they're way too long. They should also be producing a cooling effect at the moment and not, although the amplitude is plenty large enough to explain global warming. Enso, the El Nino and La Nina effect. Again, way too short, just a year or two between uh, cycles. The direction varies. It can, the La Nina will produce cooling, El Nino will produce warming, so you have to be very aware of that. 
The amplitude is also very large and can often be used to mask the standard upward tick of global warming. Again, seasonal, way too short. Of course, it varies depending on what uh, time of year, or whether it's producing warming or cooling, and the amplitude is way too big again. It's hundreds of times larger than it needs to be. Uh, so the only one that has three green uh, squares here is anthropogenic global warming. The timing is exactly right. Carbon dioxide is going up in lockstep with the temperatures. The direction is right. It's increasing carbon dioxide, decreasing aerosols, uh, which will produce the effect that we're seeing. And there's also the amplitude is perfect when you do the calculations. It produces the level of warming that we're, we should be seeing. Well, let's draw some conclusions from all of this. By just saying it's a natural cycle is a cop-out. When you hear somebody saying that, you need to have them state which cycle or cycles they are referring to. Once they've specified that, match the timing, amplitude and direction of that cycle with what we're seeing from global warming. And you will find that no natural cycle or any combination of them fits the global warming fingerprint. So if you hear somebody making this particular excuse, then tell them they're full of nonsense and post a link to this video. So until next time, thanks for listening.